one and five C two. Five C one, very short um, finding area under a curve using some geometric arguments. So in 5C.1, what we're doing, well, all 5C is a recap of kinematics. So it's important that you consider the information I've presented regarding kinematics. That's on page 17. We've got displacement, we represent with S of T. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement, that's V of T. And um, A of T is the rate of acceleration, that's the rate of change of velocity. And then we know how to get them from differentiation, the link between them. And so now we recognise we can obtain it going backwards using integration. And so that's what we're going to be doing uh, a little bit off here as well. So, let's move on to the question here. We're presented with a velocity time graph. So on the x-axis we have time in seconds and on the y-axis we have velocity in metres per second. So we have some object. And this graph maps the object's movements. Now you've probably done these, um, definitely if you've done physics, but I think you even start to do this kind of thing in year 10 physics. So um, hopefully a few of you have seen it before. So we've got, find the total distance travelled. Now the total distance travelled is going to be the area under a velocity time graph. So what we need to do to find the total distance is calculate the area of each segment. So I'm going to break it up into manageable shapes. So we've got a triangle, a rectangle, a triangle, and then another two triangles over here. Uh, now maybe even before I'll do that, I might just describe the journey that it undertakes. Okay? So on the x-axis we've got time. When time is zero, its velocity is zero. That means it's not moving. And then it accelerates, okay? And after two seconds, it's traveling at four meters per second. After one second, it's traveling at two meters per second. So it's, its velocity increases, and then its velocity remains at four meters per second for four seconds. So that's how long it lasts for over that period. Then it starts slowing down. So it still has positive velocity. It's still moving to the right, but the rate at which it moves to the right slows down. Okay, positive velocity. Until we get to this point here, when time is 10, it has a velocity of zero. It's not moving at time is 10, okay? And then after time is 10, it has negative velocity, which means it's moving to the left. So we have something moving to the right, and then it starts moving back to the left. So it moves to the left um, and it's accelerating the rate at which it moves to the left until we get to this point in time here, which is uh, 12. And at that point in time, it's moving at two meters per second to the left. And then it decides to slow down the rate at which it's moving to the left until it stops. It has a velocity of zero after 13 seconds. So that's the description of what's happening to this object, okay? It's moving to the right, and then it's moving to the left and then it stops. Okay, so we can gather that from this. So in order to determine the area, I'm just going to make a nice clear mathematical argument by dividing this up into um, a number of components that are pretty easy to calculate the area of, and then we'll go ahead and do that. So when we consider A, area A is a triangle. So the area of a triangle is half times the base times the height. The base of this triangle is two units and the height of the triangle is four units. So that's going to be four. For B, it's a rectangle, and so the base of the rectangle is four, the height of the rectangle is what the square, so it has an area of 16. All the squares are rectangles, not all rectangles are squares. C, uh, is a triangle, the base is 4 and the height is 4. D is a triangle, the base is 2 and the height is 2. And E is also a triangle, the base is 1 and the height is 2. So we've got each segment. And so then the total area, the sum of all the areas, we can use sigma to denote the sum. When we add them all up, we're going to have 20, 28, 30, 31. 31. And now, 
On the y-axis, we have velocity in meters per second, which means our distance is in meters. Our area on Earth is 31 meters. So how far has the bike traveled in total? It's traveled 31 meters in total. Part B, find the total displacement. Okay, so remember, it's moved to the right, and then it stopped, and then it moved back to the left. Okay, and that was a total of 31 meters. We're asked to find its displacement. That is, how far is it from where it started? Okay, how far is it from where it started to where it finishes? So what we need to do is we need to figure out, well, how far has it moved to the right, and then how far has it moved to the left? So this is the key part here, listen carefully. Area above the curve is distance to the right and above the x-axis, and area below the x-axis is distance to the left. All right, so if we want to know how far has it moved to the right, that's going to be A plus B plus C. All right, so we can make that argument. It's moved to the right, A plus B plus C. There the segments above the x-axis, so that's going to be 28. How far has it moved to the left? That's going to be the segments below the x-axis, D and E, 3. Okay, so it moves 28 units to the right, and then 3 units to the left. Its displacement is 25 metres. Excellent. Part C. What is the significance of the total area above the x-axis? So A, B, and C. What's the significance of that? So, sorry, these are answers A, these are answers B. That's answer C. The area above the x-axis is distance traveling to the right. Excellent. So that's 5C.1. There's four questions there. I think we spend about 20, 25 minutes working through 5C.1.